Hey guys, what's up? It's Audrey, and in this video, I'm gonna go through some really rapid fire typography effects within Photoshop. Chrome. So we'll first start by typing your type, set it to scale, then we're gonna add some effects to this layer. So we'll do a bevel and emboss, We'll set it to the inner bevel style, the smooth technique. Depth is pretty significant depending on your type thickness and no soften. I ramped up the opacity on the screen highlight value below to 100% and lowered the shadow level quite a bit to about 30%. I duplicated that type layer with effects and turned down the fill opacity to zero. And now going into the effects of that type layer, I lowered almost all of the settings and ramped up the shadows at the bottom. I added an outside stroke of about six pixels. Um, again, that'll depend on like your type size and your thickness and made the stroke color a gradient with two gray color stops sandwiching a white color stop in between. I duplicated that last layer, went into the effects, and lowered the depth and the shadows. The stroke can also be lowered too. From here this is pretty free flow uh, once you have some base settings down um, and then just duplicating and slightly adjusting some of the settings with the top layers fill set to zero um, so it can kind of create some really cool depth. And from here I'll add a curves adjustment layer on top to help bring out all the contrast and how exaggerated I want it to look. And if you want to add a glow to that group you can, uh, maybe give it some noise. From here it's, it's really all about stylistic choices. And if you want to have more control over the color of this effect, um, maybe you can add a gradient map to go on top. And if you want to take it a step further and give it more of a 2D chrome look, you can add a threshold adjustment layer and adjust the sliders to your liking. Acidic type. So you want to start out by typing out your type, duplicate that type layer, make it a smart object, and you can hide the one below if you want. And with that smart object layer selected, you want to go to filter and then liquify. And then from there, you'll want to adjust some of the settings uh, with like the pressure um, and the amount of strength for, for the liquify tool. Um, and then just push those letters around like you're stealing their lunch money as much as you want. Click OK when you're done. And then we'll duplicate that layer and rasterize it. We'll use the smudge tool on the left to further push some of those pixels around with a bit more blur. And be sure to check the strength level of that tool up top for the most effect as well. We'll go down to the adjustments and grab a threshold adjustment and then crank that slider to your liking. I found that you'll get the grungiest of pixels when you slide it furthest to the left or the right. And you could stop here, but for more stylization, I'm gonna add a gradient map adjustment. Set it to whatever colors you want. And then I'm gonna change the threshold adjustment layers blending mode to difference. And then you'll see that gradient map come through. So it's kind of like a, a doubled effect there. Interwoven type. So for the interweave type, um, you'll want to start with at least two separate layers of type, uh, preferably with contrasting typefaces like a script and maybe something blockier, um, or you could do all script and kind of have those interweave um, with all of the, the loops and swoops and everything. I also added a black stroke to both type layers just to see uh, the separation when they interweave a little better. And I'm gonna duplicate these type layers and make each of them a smart object so the stroke will then be a part of the type when we select the entire type shape, if that makes sense. Because um, when it's not a smart object and you have a stroke effect, um, whenever you select the shape of that uh, of that layer, it's not going to account for that stroke. So we're gonna make those smart objects. And then you wanna add a mask to both of those smart object layers. And really from here, it's just about masking uh, each layer to give the appearance of them interlocking. So I'd recommend using a full hardness round brush, um, then using either black or white um, to either reveal or mask out um, any parts of the type. And so I found here the main trick to getting um, the most accurate of, of masking uh, is to do command or control and then click on the layer smart object that you need to see their shape outline from and then masking it on the opposite layer. So then you don't have to eyeball the outline on your own. There might be points where you'll notice one of the type layers should sit a little differently than they are at that current point for the best effect. Um, so if that's the case, just apply white to all of your masks, uh, adjust your type, and then you can repaint from there. Pixelated type. Start by typing your type. Duplicate that type layer and make it a smart object. The smart object selected go to filter, pixelate, and mosaic, and then adjust your settings from there of how legible you'd like for that to be. And then to give the most contrast to those pixels, I'll add a threshold adjustment layer on top. 
And the thing that sucks about this within Photoshop is that you can't make that threshold adjustment layer a clipping mask to that smart object. Um, it'll just completely ignore that, that adjustment period. Um, so if you want to have a more concrete pixelated type layer, you'll probably need to duplicate all of these live layers um, and then turn all of that into a smart object with that threshold layer and then make it one make it one singular layer. But again, save your live layers just in case you need to go back and make any adjustments. And then with that flattened smart object with the threshold layer and your type, you can go to select color range and then select that white background and it'll select all the white areas for you. And then by holding option and clicking on the mask button in the layers panel, you can make a negative mask out of that, leaving you just with that black type. Ink bleed. Type your type, duplicate that and make that a smart object. With the smart object selected, go to filter, blur gallery, and field blur. You can add as many points as you want and adjust their individual blur settings to be more crisp or more, more blurry, and then click OK. I'm gonna add a white background under everything to see our effects a little bit better. And then for the quickest version of this effect, you can set the type smart objects blending mode to dissolve. And then you can see how that affects the blurry areas there. But we can take that a step further by duplicating that smart object with the blur effect, going back into the settings and adjusting all or most of the points so they're, they're a little bit different. You'll want to set that smart object layer to a normal blending mode. And then you can add a threshold adjustment layer. Um, you'll be able to see that actual ink bleed look in the counters of the letters and kind of the spaces in between start connecting a little bit. Stained glass. So you want to type your type and set that fill to 0%. I pasted some layer styles from my other file so we can take a look at what we have in those. And you can also set these settings to whatever you like stylistically. But starting with the bevel and emboss, we've got an inner bevel, smooth technique, minimal size and soften, shadows are about midway. You can manipulate the bevel's contour as well for a little more interesting shape to capture those highlights and shadows if you want to. I also added a stroke. Um, it's more of a stylistic choice to help lift it from that background, uh, but totally up to you. Then I added an inner glow. And for this, especially with the stained glass effect, I would choose a color that's a bit more part of your uh, overall composition uh, for that color refracted look. So in this case, it's a bit more red. I uh, added a satin setting as well um, and set its blending mode to overlay. You can really just edit its opacity to your liking. Creamy 3D. So we're actually going to start in Illustrator for this one. You'll want to type your type and create outlines of that. And then using the newer 3D options in Illustrator, we're going to extrude that. And then I'm going to reset all of these default rotation settings down here so we can get our type more straight on. And then I'll start bumping up the X rotation value to get my type facing where I want it to. We'll add some more depth to the extrusion up top and maybe the, change the type's color to white so we can see the form a bit better. And then skipping over to the lighting tab, I'm going to remove the ambient light checkbox to try to get as much contrast in these letters as possible. And then from here, I can literally just copy and paste this type from Illustrator into Photoshop as a smart object. From here, we'll want to scale our type where we want it, and then we're going to separate the light and dark values into their own layers. So to do that, I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select all of the top faces white areas, copy that, and then paste it on a new layer using paste in place so we don't have to try to realign that again. So now you should have two separate layers where you have the white faces that are up on top and then the black shadows slash extrusion uh, at the bottom. So now our values are separated and then we'll just add some extra layers making that as a clipping mask to each the top and bottom layers. Um, and then we can go in with a soft round brush or a grainy brush and add in whatever colors we'd like. When you're done painting, you'll wanna make each of those clipping mask layers a smart object and then go to filter, noise, and add noise. And then you can add whatever level of graininess you want there. So again, this is just more of like a stylized, kind of illustrative kind of type treatment. If you like this video, feel free to like, subscribe, all that jazz, um, and let me know if there's any other videos that you guys wanna see in the future. And as always, I hope this was helpful. See you next time.